Hello, welcome back. And it's part two of the, actually I think it's actually part three of the BR52 build. Now, got quite a bit of it done, but before it started, there are two colour schemes. And basically, what I want on this one is for it to look more or less as though it's just come out of the factory. It's just been built and come out of the factory. And what I've decided on is this colour, the black and the red. I've looked at a lot of videos of it, and even during the war, there were a lot of them that were this colour. Can't find any uh, video or photographs of any with the, the this kind of camouflage on it, so I'm, I'm not going to go down that route. This one is a semi-gloss black and quite a high gloss bright red on the bottom. So I've got those two paints from Vallejo, 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 and that's what that's the route we're going to take. Having said that, you've got to be very careful then as to <laughs> which bits you, you, you're going to apply, uh, stick together at first. First off, we'll come back to that in a minute or two. Section one, page page six, and really quite easy sticking things together and then putting the two frame rails together the two chassis rails if you like together what I did find though is that although all of this fits together really quite easily it had quite a pronounced curve in the chassis when I when I did that it was it was curved round in it obviously I'm exaggerating it was out by maybe three, four mil, which is quite a lot. You know, you, you couldn't run a real train like that. On all of these pieces, and right through the kit that I've used, that I've built so far, there's a lot of injection pins. There are also a lot of seams, mold seams, on each and every piece that you've got to take off, otherwise you'll see it a mile away. Takes a little bit of time, but hey, there, there you go. I've put quite a lot of photographs of this on, so that you can you can see the, the that work that's been done on it. Moving on to section two, most of it's fairly easy. It's a putting the springs on, uh, put the buffers together, put the front rail on that that carries the buffers and the air lines, of course, and all the springs. Springs again fairly easy, but they're very delicate to put together on These pieces here. I think they were G9. Yeah, they are G9 There are two tiny pins on the inside You may be able to see those. Let's see if we can zoom in on them Yeah, you can see that the the, the spring has an arm that goes into the into G9 the two tiny pins on the inside the first one I tried to push in as you're supposed to and all I achieved was breaking the the arm off the spring and I had to re-glue it. So what I did in the end, I'll just show you that in a bit more detail if I can, breaking this, this arm off here, oh, there is it there, that arm off there. So what I did in the end was on the inside of this piece here is shaved off one side of the tiny pin then put them in, then glued them, and that seems to work much better. You're also going to have to make sure that you get all of these level, <laughs> otherwise at least one of your wheels isn't going to be sitting on the rail, which wouldn't be right, would it? And that takes a little bit of time. And as I say, you've still got to scrape off the, the moulding seams on each and every one, each and every piece you've got to scrape it off. As you can see down the inside there, there are a lot of um, injection pinholes. At the front here, there's, there's, there's four on those two mud guards, there's another four. They're literally everywhere. They're not small ones either, they're quite big, so it's quite a bit of work and quite a lot of filler to fill them in, sand them down and, and make it look right. Other than that, you know, it's, it's really quite easy to do that. Moving on, swiftly on as you say. 
The castle here, which holds the front of the boiler up on this bit here, four pieces stuck together, fairly easy. What I did was I stuck the four pieces together, then I pushed it into the the chassis itself to make sure it remained remained square while the glue set. This assembly here is part of the braking assembly and it goes on onto here. Now all this has got to be painted so I put most of it together and as you can see the, the you know all turns it's it does what it's supposed to do but I've left out these two little pieces which are these two here for a G8, G3 and G4 and I've left those out because as you can see it would be a nightmare trying to paint those while it's all together so I'll hand paint those and then put them in after the, everything else has been painted so that's those these some of these are supports for the boiler and some of them are supports for the walkway along the side of the uh, of the engine, along the side of the boiler. The important thing with these is that they go, they're, they're fitted in and they end up at 90 degrees to the, boil, uh, to the, the chassis there. That's got to be 90 degrees otherwise it's not going to work. So what I did was, I mean you could do exactly what you want, it's entirely up to you guys. But what I did was these pieces, a, um, which are the pieces on the top here, as I put, I put one of those in, then one of these, and used the set square and made sure it was all square. Once it was all square, glued the uprights in, the supports in from the bottom, wait until the glue had set, and then moved on to the next one, put the, the, the plate in at the top, sorry you can't see that, put the plate in at the top, then put the support in, and all the way along until I got to the end there, and that way you end up with them all upright, otherwise you can't really see that on there, well maybe you can, yeah, but they are all at 90 degrees to the chassis. A lot of little pieces had to go on, which have, have all gone on there, and the pins at the side here, they are the, um, these here, are the locating points for some of the brake levers. Now they don't actuate the brakes, but there's a bar that goes on there that turns, and it pivot, it, in real life it would pivot on that on that peg there. At the end of the peg, let's see if I can get in a bit closer, we're not going out of focus, yeah we can. At the end of the peg there's a little pin. Now when this is on the sprue, the sprue goes in from here and I almost cut one of them off when I was going to remove it from the sprue and then I realised there's got to be some reason that there's a, a difference on that. So I cut them off at the end and the, the difference is there so that you can you can pivot the brake lever on there. So you need to be careful not to cut it off. Again I've put some photographs on so you can see exactly what I mean there. Moving on to section 4 and it basically details the back plate here which is a joint, uh, the, it's a support, oh you can't see that I don't think. This bit here is a support for the the back of the cab. So the cab goes along here, comes along, and then the firebox sits here. And this piece, which is, I shall find it, A24, when you look at it, it's slightly chamfered, uh, slightly angled at the top, okay, and 
on the pictures that I looked at, I couldn't work out why that would be slightly angled. So I looked at all sorts of pictures and where have we got one? This one here shows it, it shows it there and it doesn't quite meet for some reason and that's A24 there and that's the bottom of the, uh, the firebox and it doesn't meet because they've actually made this model, photographed it and then cut the background out and used it as the, the painting diagram however when they've made it they put that in the wrong way round that should be one piece sitting down and it's angled at that, in that direction towards the front of the engine so that the firebox which is angled at the same will sit on it nicely and uh, it, it will support it properly and that's about it for that one I mean yeah, maybe it's me being too finicky but I do like to see it done properly the air tanks these two air tanks simple enough again I've put some photographs on of, of building them up be careful though that they are different uh, G24 and G25 are completely different and what I've found with everything that glue, goes glued onto the chassis here it all has to be trimmed and not only trimmed it has to be trimmed and and, and fitted so you, you're going to spend some time trimming and fitting these now the instructions say to glue these to the tanks and then glue the tanks on there it's going to be a lot easier to paint all of this by gluing these supports for the tanks onto the chassis, paint it, paint the the tanks themselves and then glue them onto there. Got to be easier. That's where we're up to there, that's section four. One more section to go. We've only done a tiny bit on this section. And this piece here I've built, put together but not put in, likewise with the, the pin that holds it all together. I've built them but not put them onto the model, because uh, I'm going to paint them first. And this piece here, it says make two, one's for the front here, and the other one is for the tender, which we haven't started yet, that's way, way in the future. So, and likewise with two of the buffers, when you make the buffers, it'll tell you to make two of each buffer, and two are for the the tender and two are for the front of the engine here so I've not built these because they they go on the side and they're going to be black as they are on the real train but everything else that I've built so far is going to be red um, it's going to be a bright red as it is on the on the diagram that I've already showed you most of it fits together really quite easily and there's no real problems with it as I say you've got to trim a lot you've got to fill a lot but that's all part of, the, uh, part of the, the, the pleasure of doing this sort of stuff, isn't it? Oh, I'll tell you one thing before I go. This one here, I had to take apart from this piece here. I had to take it apart and turn it up the other way. The hollow bit, I would have thought, went to the... to the uh, inside of the train, the engine. But it doesn't. It goes that way up which seems a bit strange to me but that's the way it goes which means that I've got to fill all those little holes in it the the injection holes pin holes as they go what I'm going to do next with this is I'm going to spray it all with a, a light grey primer and then I'm going to paint it with a gloss red paint and that should be should take quite a while that because there's a lot of nooks and crannies on there and then when I've done that and I've assembled the bits and pieces that aren't on it yet I might do a bit of detail work on it and then I'll do another video let you know how I've got on any questions any comments please leave them in the boxes below and it would be great if you would like and subscribe once again thanks for watching see you next time ta-da